afternoon. Uh, I'm Kendra Ramsey, she, her, Executive Director of the California Bicycle Coalition, um, and I'm joining you today from Sacramento. I'm so excited to see such a great group of folks uh, from all over the state here with us today. Welcome. Um, this is the first of a series of sessions which will preview topics likely to be discussed at the 2024 California Bicycle Summit to be held April 18th to 19th in San Diego. Today's session is titled Bike Advocacy and Infrastructure Successes in San Diego. In a moment, I will introduce our panel, but first a bit about the summit. The Biennial California Bicycle Summit is the state's must attend bicycle event and one of the nation's leading bicycle related conferences. Our summit theme for 2024 is crossroads because our state and our society stand at a crossroads. This is a crucial time for the active transportation movement. As the pace of climate change accelerates and damage from, from severe weather accumulates, our window to de decarbonize our transportation system shrinks. The summit will feature several dynamic days of informative and transformational keynotes, plenaries and workshops, as well as exciting and interesting bike rides around San Diego and many opportunities to learn, network and exchange ideas. The summit is an opportunity to learn from people advancing promising policies, planning great infrastructure, and building more sustainable, equitable, and multimodal communities throughout California. More information on registration and a special discount for the summit will be shared at the end of the session. Summit speakers will share knowledge from throughout the state that participant, participants can take home and apply in their communities. We have a unique opportunity to learn from the dedicated people and organizations working throughout the San Diego region, and even see some of the great work in action in April. To give a preview of some of the things going on in the region and share some strategies for success in both policy and infrastructure, we have a great panel today to share some of what they are doing. I'd now like to introduce you to today, today's panel. Chloe Lauer is the Executive Director of the San Diego County Bicycle Coalition, a nonprofit organization with a 35 year history of successful um, advocacy for education about and celebration of life by bike. Josh Clark is a senior regional planner at the San Diego Association of Governments and serves on the California Walk Bike Technical Advisory Committee to Caltrans. Jeremy Bloom is the COO at Circulate San Diego, working to create excellent mobility choices and vibrant, healthy neighborhoods. Everett Hauser is the bicycle program manager with the City of San Diego Transportation Department. Anar Salayev is the executive director at Bike SD. Bike SD is a grassroots advocacy organization that is working to make the city of San Diego a more bikeable and livable city for all. Last but not least, Randy Torres Van Vleck is the CEO of Takayo Engagement, the co-organizer of Los Cruzadores, and an appointed member of the Caltrans Calsta California Transportation Commission Interagency Equity Advisory Committee. I think that wins for the number of acronyms and words today. Yeah, like Kendra said, um, we're an organization that's been around for many years since 1987. And um, this is a little picture of our small but mighty team and our values down at the bottom. And our main focus is advocating for and protecting the rights of all people on bicycles and promoting bicycling as a form of transportation and recreation. So, next slide, please. So as um, Kendra said, we have three main pillars in our organization, advocating, educating, and celebrating life by bike. You can go to the next slide. Um, in terms of education, we've actually had unprecedented demand um, this year with the e-bike uh, revolution. So that's been really exciting. Um, and one day, what our educator, Mr. Kevin, actually reached a thousand people um, through six different classes that he taught in one single day. So that's incredible. And annually, we reach about 15,000 people. But that's far from the you know 3.3 million total in our county. So um, we really want to build our capacity. And one way that we do that is by collaborating with other organizations that you see on this panel. And this slide just gives an example of one of the things that we recently did together, which was to host um, a film screening of this street project, which is about the revolution of taking our streets back for 
people who aren't in cars and how it's happening, you know, globally, nationally, and then locally. So we kind of brought it home with a panel discussion that you um, see where we discussed, you know, how we can apply what the inspiration of the film to our our local context. And so anything that we talk about today, just to kind of set the stage, um, what you'll hear from others, you'll hear about certain projects, but just know that they've been a collaborative effort. And that's one of the things we love about our region and our community and our advocates is that we work really well together. You know, sometimes we might overlap a bit, but we don't really see it as a redundancy, but rather a way to reach more people. And also that sometimes people need to hear it from more than one voice or more than one organization to kind of really get that message across. Um, so, and besides collaborating with the other mobility orgs, we also collaborate um, with climate orgs, you know, because reaching our climate action goals is really supported by changes in mobility mode. And then we partner with um, trauma prevention groups at different hospitals, because of course, you know, through talking about safety and, you know, educating folks on how to navigate our streets and communicate with drivers, we can, and wear helmets and everything, we can prevent trauma and injuries. Um, yeah, so if you go to the next slide, um, our advocacy ranges from like, really big regional things to really small prototypes. And here's an example of something that we're about to prototype in the uh, region of Claremont. It's in San Diego, the city of San Diego. Um, it's a, a great neighborhood. It has some challenges that are endemic to our region, which are that we have a lot of canyons. They're not really shown here on this map, but you can just imagine that we have mesas and then canyons. And so sometimes that can be challenging in navigating and getting like connected networks of bikeways um, when you have those top topographic changes. So we it also has 29 schools and a lot of community parks. And so what we're looking at is a, actually collaborated collaboration with Bike SD um, and Bike Claremont, which is a neighborhood org to prototype neighborhood greenways. And here's just one example. It's a 2.5 mile stretch. It goes the total east-west corridor. And as you can see, um, biking is only three minutes longer than if you were to drive. And if you add in like parking and other things, it's biking is probably the most efficient way to get across this neighborhood. So this is something that I presented to the mobility board with um, a Bike SD member, Jason Vance. And um, just an example of how we're working, you know, grassroots ground up as well as with our, you know, regional partners to kind of do top down, like things like complete streets. So we're, if we can get this through in a kind of more quick build, quick to deploy mode and demonstrate how effective it can be in terms of, you know, getting cars off the road, reducing emissions, increasing safety, and just making life more enjoyable for our neighbors, um, then we can have a more broad policy for neighborhood greenways across our region. Um, next, next slide, please. Oh no, that's actually circulate. So you can go back. Um, just a couple other, oh, it seems like we're missing a slide. Um, anyway, uh, maybe I added it too late. Is there a slide before this one? Like slide, no. Okay. Um, I guess we have a different version of the slideshow. But anyway, what I'll just mention is that as a small but mighty team, you know, we have to rely on our city governments for the 18 different cities that we work with across the county. Um, so one way that we partner with those cities is by supporting them when they come out with their like active transportation plans or their mobility master plans and we review them and guide them and we've actually been um, in conversation also with other cities like vista to update their you know sort of enforcement codes um, regarding cycling so we serve as a resource um, to these cities across the region of course we don't have the staffing to um be at consultants on everything, but we do our best to support them and then give public comment at city council meetings and just really encourage them for all the active transportation planning and mobility master planning that's going on in the region. 
Um, you may have heard that there was a state of emergency in Carlsbad and Encinitas that was declared um, in terms of roadway safety. So we've also partnered with them to really amp up the um, the classes that we offer for city cycling as parents and youth are really concerned about the state of affairs. And so, yeah, we're really happy to be here on the panel. Thank you for inviting us. And I'll turn it over to our next panelist. Thanks, Chloe. I believe Josh is next and I am going to transfer screen share. I'm in the engineering and construction division here at Sandag. Sandag is the, the regional MPO and Council of Governments and Long Range Transportation Planning Agency in the San Diego region. So excited that you're all gonna be here in San Diego. I'm gonna show you some examples of recently completed projects. And just wanna say that I'm really pleased to be on this panel with everyone uh, that, and, and thanks CalBike for coordinating it. Um, everyone on this panel and their organizations had a, had a big role in, in the projects that I'm about to, to outline and share results from. Cool, so I uh, I wanna talk about uh, the, the projects themselves, but I should start with the program largely. Uh, 10 years ago, Sandag Board of Directors made a commitment to building 77 miles of bikeways uh, in the region to fill out the regional network. And they committed $200 million to that. And that's been vital to always point back to say that there is a commitment to, to just plan, design, implement these bikeway projects with that with that funding committed. And obviously, the 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 cost of these projects have gone up. However, they've been we've been very competitive with grant funding because these are innovative projects for all ages and abilities. And so we've got a one to one leverage for for using that funding that was committed for these projects to go out and get grant dollars. Um, and you can see here the chart shows uh, shows the projects uh, the mileage for each phase that they're in currently. So this uh, equates to a, a, approximately 11 projects that are in final design currently, four projects that are that are under construction right now, and then 11 projects that have been completed. So I'm gonna talk about those completed projects, uh, some of them, and talk about the evaluation results, uh, because I think this is something that, that uh, hopefully you can all share to say that, uh, that there are some major impacts that these projects can bring to travel on these corridors and to these communities. So we'll start here with the 4th and 5th Avenue bikeways. Uh, I trust that when you all are here for the summit, you very likely could make your way onto this bikeway. This connects downtown to uptown and is uh, 4.5 miles and is a couplet, uh, separated bikeways heading in both directions on these two one-way streets. So it's been exciting to, to compare the 2017 precondition, which was a, a class two buffered bike lane, uh, thanks to a road diet from the city of San Diego. So that 2017 condition compared to the 2022 condition, it showed an, uh, we still had a 54% increase in bike ridership on this corridor. This is the only corridor that I'm gonna provide results from where pedestrian travel decreased. And I'll, I'll note that that's because this is connecting downtown. So I, I don't quite think that the downtown business activity district had, had fully returned uh, to kind of full activation uh, post pandemic in 2022. So that that is a big reason why the drag for pedestrian volumes is lower. I wouldn't say that it's the result of the project, but I, I do need to point that out. So exciting to see that motor vehicle travel on this corridor decreased as well from the precondition and that the speeds decreased. So let's move over to another part of the network. And these are the east west bikeways, the Georgia Mead bikeway here on the north segment and the Landis bikeway south. These connect uh, North Park, City Heights, University Heights, and Normal Heights. Uh, just outside this map is, is the 4th and 5th Avenue bikeway. So there's obviously a, an important network element here. And so we look at these two projects specifically, which are effectively kind of like uh, what Chloe mentioned, Neighborhood Green Ray or Bike Boulevard projects. Uh, the bike ridership increased on these corridors once we implemented this all ages and abilities bikeways. Pedestrian travel also increased. And you can see the motor vehicle travel decrease. There's a, a ton of roundabouts, I think like 18 totals between these two projects or neighborhood traffic circles. And a lot of really good innovative uh, bikeway design elements like these pop-outs here. Uh, great to see that that uh, contributed to a decrease in motor vehicle speeds too. So let's go uh, look at the Landis bikeway. Here's an example of one of those neighborhood traffic circles um, and some other cool innovative bikeway design elements like this ContraFlow uh, raised bikeway that I adore riding on. Uh, so here we are uh, looking at a, a segment of the Landis Bikeway and 
I removed one count location here because it was a major outlier in 2017. There was a, a special event. So yeah, the pitfalls of data collection with outliers. But anyways, removing that one for a, a good pre and post uh, shows the same thing, right? Increases in bike pet travel. And I wanted to point out specifically that we measure the segment speed uh, for like the free flowing traffic condition, similar to the way that a speed survey is done for po setting posted speed limits. And it's so great to see that uh, on a street segment here, the 85th percentile speed uh, reduces down five miles per hour. And so when the city of San Diego goes out and does their speed survey and posts the speed limit here, they can start with a 20 mile per hour speed limit, which uh, I think is a is a great outcome that, uh, that these physical interventions uh, resulted in. Okay, so I, I want to talk about the Coastal Rail Trails uh, Rose Creek Bikeway. This this project was built uh, with the Mid Coast Trolley Extension. Uh, the Blue Line Trolley extends from downtown San Diego to UTC in the UC San Diego area. So you can see here that the the trolley tracks and the uh, the low sand tracks are are in the image here. And then this Class One Bikeway was built uh, parallel to Santa Fe Street as a good kind of rails and trails uh, project. So same thing, right? Bike ridership increases, pet travel increases. Uh, shouldn't be surprising. There was no sidewalk here before. So that's exciting to see. And the motor vehicle travel decreases on the segment. And so I, I want to talk about the riders revealed preference uh, at this screen line location of, of the Rose Creek Bikeway, because I think it was very telling to compare the precondition with the post. So the precondition, this is a class three bike route, right? On Santa Fe Street, where you can see the sharrows, the shared lane markings. And in the precondition in 2017, on a typical Wednesday, uh, we see the 24 hour volumes are approximately 300 total. Um, here they are shown 24 hours for north south biking. Now, let's look at the same period post project in 2022. There's a 75% increase in bike volumes on the corridor, and 95% of those users are choosing the all ages and abilities Rose Creek bikeway instead of the Sherrill marked Santa Fe Street, which I think was very telling. So all of these uh, these locations we're we're tracking uh, along with the mileage. So it's been exciting to see as we build out more all ages and abilities bikeway facilities throughout the San Diego region. Uh, what this what effect this has on on ridership. So I saw that Quentin from Eco Counter was on the on the call. So shout out Eco Counter. These are all counts that we get from uh, automated bike counters in on eight different corridors. And you can see we've been tracking them for a long time. And uh, I want to point out. Uh, and highlight that the three corridors, so obviously we see the bike boom in 2020, but uh, from 2021, it doesn't revert back to the 2019 uh, pre-pandemic volumes. Uh, it, it's it's still increasing between 2021 and 2022. And I want to point out three corridors that had the biggest increases. They were all all ages and abilities bikeways. So as I mentioned, the 4th and 5th Avenue bikeway, um, University Avenue and Hillcrest, it will be upgraded still, but it's a uh, it connects to all ages and abilities protected bikeways. So there's a network effect there where that where we're seeing increases um, in connecting segments of the network. And then the the uh, the corridor with the highest ridership, I think we'll talk about uh, other folks uh, we'll talk about during this webinar. And I think certainly merits a deep dive at the bike summit is the 30th Street project. And on that corridor, there is a 67 percent increase uh, in people biking after a full year of it being completed in 2022. And before it was just a Shero and signed uh, class three bike route. So I, I think that's remarkable and, and certainly, um, yeah, merits a full hour of discussion. Uh, so I, I just want to take a step back and say that I talked a lot about the capital projects that our colleagues here at Sandag have been implementing and they're remarkable, but uh, we're always working on the, the overall program. And, and that process of planning, designing, and implementing these projects is iterative. So we're excited that we're using what we've learned to continue to refine uh, the the regional bike network uh, with our colleagues in the planning division here at Sandag with an ongoing in progress update to the San Diego regional bike network through a regional active transportation, active transportation plan. We're also working on a vision zero action plan. I expect either or both of these things would probably be presented on at the summit or we could talk about them while you're here. Uh, and then lastly, I gotta say that our it's so critical to have a communications and outreach team that has been working on this whole process. So they've worked routinely to get feedback and provide information to anyone interested. And critically, they manage a construction hotline here at Sandag. So as you saw, some of those bikeway projects are, are in people's front yards and they unfortunately don't hear about them until they start going into construction, for example. So I'll be, I just wanna say how important it is to have staff here that are mindful of those um, impacts and and filling any knowledge vacuums and, and providing people with all the information they need and, and reasons why we're doing this. 
And it was exciting to share the results um, from these projects. So thanks, everyone. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to share. That's it for me. Great. Thanks, Josh. Um, I will share my screen again. I believe that Jeremy has some slides. Thanks, Kendra. And yeah, echoing Josh, thanks, Kelvike, for uh, organizing this webinar and welcome everyone to San Diego in the spring. Yeah. Um, we can't wait to show you our, our cool bike lanes. Um, as Kendra mentioned, Circulate's work uh, is to create excellent mobility choices and vibrant, healthy neighborhoods. And we do that through the intersection of kind of our three core uh, pillars, um, housing, sustainable growth, safe streets, and public transit advocacy. And we really do that through a number of different community engagement um, and advocacy advocacy work. Uh, I thought I would touch a little bit on kind of our, our, our approach to policy and advocacy, um, and then talk a little bit about our education work as well. So um, at Circulate, we follow a proven advocacy model to make change, and our formula is really simple. We identify a problem, recommend a well-researched solution, work with the media to remind the public and over and over again of who is the decision maker uh, that's responsible for solving that problem. And then once it's resolved, we do a lot of uh, public credit uh, to credit the decision makers for you know taking action and doing the right thing. Um, and so one of those advocacy uh, areas that we, we worked on since 2015 is our Vision Zero. Um, we did a lot of work to get the city of San Diego uh, to commit to a Vision Zero um, commitment. And so we did that in 2015. Um, first, we identified, um, we threw a report, our Hope for Vision Zero. Um, we identified it, identified 15 intersections, we called them the fatal 15, um, to identify to the city of San Diego as, as areas and intersections that um, contributed to the most crashes um, and pedestrian loss, loss of life. Um, and so we did that. We, we identified those 15, those fatal 15, and really just, uh, hammered um, the mayor's office at the time to, to uh, you know, implement corrections. Um, and, and over the course of a number of years, uh, the city um, not only invested in those 15 intersections, but actually the, the top 100. Um, so we're actually going back to that model again. Um, now in this post-pandemic world, we Circulate is uh, actively working to release a brand new report in 2024 called Hope Provision Zero 2024 uh, to you know use some of the new data that's out there um, from the you know pandemic and post pandemic world uh, to identify again the 15 most dangerous intersections and then hold the city accountable to not only that um, but we have uh, three kind of big pushes that we're going to be doing around Vision Zero next year. So that's kind of our Vision Zero work and our advocacy work. Um, another kind of advocacy. Uh, area that we, we took on last year, um, and this is kind of the intersection of public transit, housing, and safe streets in Vision Zero, but we worked um, with the city um, to have them pass a sustainable development area uh, to invest in communities, making them more walkable, uh, more dense uh, by changing the land, land codes around transit areas um, and making, instead of a 30 uh, half mile walk shed, uh, one mile walk shed for uh, transit oriented development um, at the city level, uh, to hopefully implement, you know, better biking, walking infrastructure in those areas um, as new housing um, goes in. And then this last piece, just with the photos that I have here, um, Circulate not only does that advocacy work on our policy side, we also have Circulate Planning, which is our fee-for-service planning work. Uh, we do a ton of work with uh, the Office of Traffic Safety here in San Diego, partnering with a number of jurisdictions, the city of San Diego, the county, um, as well as Chula Vista Police Department and San Diego Police Department, uh, to implement, um, you know, education, community outreach. Uh, so we do a lot of transit field trips. Uh, we do walking field trips where we work with communities to identify areas that need to be, you know, have better infrastructure investments. And then we do community outreach around biking safety. And so um, we do a lot of work with, you know, bike rodeos with the schools. Um, and so we have some of the photos here. Um, and then we also, you know, release reports around this as well. So on our website, you can see our safe bike field guide, our safe routes to schools toolkit. Um, we also did a, a cool demonstration project at UCSD um, around um, their own bike lane. I believe I'll pass it over to Anar with Bike SD. Cool. Thanks, Jeremy. And thanks to CalBike for hosting us and also for bringing the summit to beautiful San Diego, America's finest city, or so we think. Um, my name is Anar Salayev. I'm the executive director of Bike SD, and I'm going to go over few cool things that we're up to. Um, 
I'll also share my screen for one second. All right, so Bike SD or Bike San Diego is a grassroots volunteer driven 501c3 nonprofit advocacy organization. That's a lot of words there, but uh, we do a lot of work. Um, in San Diego, we have a ton of uh, volunteers, um, some that are working with Chloe, others that work with Circulate, um, and others that do small things in their own neighborhoods, all sort of under the Bike SD umbrella. And our general mission is to make San Diego a more bikeable and livable city for all. And so while our name is Bike San Diego, uh, traditionally we have focused primarily on the central core of San Diego, which is sandwiched between the eight in the north and the Coronado Bridge down south, and then the airport in the west, and then sort of the eastern border or boundary of City Heights in the east. This is mostly due to bandwidth and our base being primarily located in the central core of San Diego. But also we feel that the central core being some of the oldest neighborhoods in the city are lower hanging fruit and are ripe for change, not only uh, in regards to bike infrastructure, but pedestrian and transit improvements, just due to the sheer amount of density, the narrower corridors, the amount of small businesses and parks and schools that are scattered throughout. We think this is a really good place for the city and the community-based organizations to make real material change that we can experiment with and then expand out to other parts of the city as we see fit. So for you know bandwidth reasons and maybe philosophical reasons, we focus primarily on central San Diego. We have been successful um, in more recent years in places like University City, um, specifically around UC San Diego and the surrounding neighborhood there, um, as well as in the sort of Bird Rock, Pacific Beach, Ocean Beach, Mission Bay, coastal communities um, on you know the western coast of San Diego. Um, so we're trying to expand our reach there. So if anyone on this uh, call it lives in any of these neighborhoods or any other neighborhoods and they would like to be involved with our work or to expand our work into your respective community, please reach out to me. Moving on, I'm going to touch on three core pillars or maybe categories of work that we have and will continue to focus on um, over the uh, next few years. So first is our shifting focus from project work to policy work. So traditionally, we've been very involved with pushing specific corridor improvements, think 30th Street, Park Boulevard, um, and some of the other uh, pathways that um, Chloe and Josh had touched on. And um, that's a lot of grind work where you need to get involved early on for every single um, street or block or corridor that is planned for work. And so now we are looking to shift our attention instead to policy and legislative work to make lasting change that trickles down to multiple individual projects at once rather than going um, with the piecemeal approach that we've done uh, historically. So um, some campaigns in line with this shift of focus now are we're working with the city and council on their uh, complete streets policy. Um, as well as their updated streets design manual, which we hope to get our hands on in the next couple of weeks. On top of that, we've also been uh, working collaboratively with some folks here on the fiscal year 25 budget. So stay tuned for uh, more news around that. And then also um, now we're pushing for AB 43 and AB 413 implementation in the city of San Diego. For those who might not be familiar, um, AB 43 allows municipalities to reduce speed limits by five miles an hour on specified corridors. And then 413 is the daylighting bill, which allows municipalities to stop uh, um, uh, people from parking 25 feet from a marked intersection. And so those are our next two big sort of legislative campaigns that we'll be working with the city and council on over the next few quarters. Oh, that animation didn't work how I wanted to. There we go. Our, our next pillar here is around bikes mean business. So oftentimes some of the loudest opposition to new bike infrastructure comes from small business owners. And we get it. 
change is difficult, and losing parking is sometimes perceived as an end to their livelihood. So what we've been doing is partnering with local business improvement districts and associations, as well as directly with local businesses to promote their offerings and discount and provide discounts to uh, customers that are arriving by bike, by foot, by transit. And so currently we're working with places like North Park Main Street, the El Cajon Boulevard Business Improvement Association and South Park Business Group to develop a Bikes Mean Business coupon book which we hope will encourage more people to frequent their favorite local uh, businesses by bike and be incentivized to do so. And finally, uh, community engagement. So in the battle for safer streets, we find that most San Diegans and local leaders aren't even really aware of the problem. Um, they're just, they're not vehemently opposed one way or another, nor are they dead set on the auto-centric realism in which we live today. They really just want to live and move freely without fear of death, getting from point A to point B. So what we're trying to do is engage these individuals, particularly through group rides, workshops, hackathons, seminars, and tabling events um, to make them aware of the dangers of our roads and how they can be made better. We essentially want to convey to them that the way our roads built aren't a given. They have been changed and they can be changed for the better. And so this involves, you know, a lot of shuttle diplomacy, which requires that we have an open ear, mind and heart when speaking to all stakeholders involved in doing this work. And if you'd like to be involved with any of our campaigns, programs, outreach, or have any ideas for new campaigns, um, visit us at bikesd.org or find us on any social media channel. Uh, we're at bikesd. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Anar. And I believe, uh, Everett, you'll be sharing your slides as well. Um... Yes, looking good. Good. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Cal Bike. Uh, thanks, all the panel members. Good to see everyone out there on the Zoom lands. Uh, I'm Everett Hauser, a program manager with the city's transportation department. And let's get started. So uh, again, welcome to San Diego when you do arrive next spring. This was the scene uh, back in 2015. Uh, met at the Wyndham down by the bay, downtown San Diego. And prior to that, downtown did not have any dedicated bike facilities. It was tragic. But people were still out there because they ride uh, when they need to to get where they're going. But when you arrive, you'll see our new downtown mobility plan approved cycle tracks uh, this is Pacific Highway. You can see a hotel still in the background, removed a travel lane, created a buffer. And so my presentation today is really light, just kind of going to highlight a few things you might see since last time, uh, or if you're local, you'll pick on other things. So uh, like Josh mentioned, um, you know, the region has done a, a good job counting. And um, recently we installed some eco counters as well. So you can see that way over here. Uh, with the display unit. So that displays the ridership on Pacific Highway. Here's this guy riding over the loops. And so we get a good sense of how these facilities make improvements in, in ridership trends. So if we're downtown uh, in the spring, you can check out Pacific Highway. And downtown is really our you know city's core. Uh, big deal to build out that network with so many destinations and opportunities. Uh, and then so we continue up onto Balboa Park. Uh, into the central Mesa area. Uh, this is a recent, recent project bundled with a pipeline. Uh, again, as mentioned, a lot of advocacy work by the different organizations to really help push this, push the um, museum organizations along, all the uh, groups in Balboa Park. Very, very, uh, everyone that's concerned about Balboa, any changes in Balboa Park. So big deal to get this one through. Uh, but it, uh, brought in these bike lanes, some bus lanes, and you can check that out here as well. Uh, as mentioned, this is 30th Street and North Park and another counter really to demonstrate the the impact of that program. And it's it's uh, really bringing a lot of good connections for all the families that live in North Park, finally creating uh, that option for all ages and abilities, people to get around. And so we're very excited about that project and its success in the city and hope you check that out. Check, check that out. Uh, I've got some new big infrastructure pieces that since you were last year too. This is the West Mission Bay Bridge. Um, 
newly rebuilt sections under for the San Diego River Trail and up top on this bridge deck on each direction are big 10 foot wide lanes uh, connecting for bikes and peds across the San Diego River. So this is out towards the west. Check this out when you're here. Um, just a little bit of a highlight, again, moving farther out where we go um, with implementing our community plans. This is a feature on Kearney Mesa. Uh, all the little dash lines are projects that we've bundled with either overlay projects or again, group jobs. Those are pipelines or a slurry program and really connecting the planned separated network that um, these community plans envision. So really expanding our network mileage, connecting to those regional facilities. So there's a lot of lot of uh, new facilities and mileage out there that the region has been building and we're connecting into. So again, here's the Kearney Mesa area. And uh, that right in the middle, the north-south road is called Convoy Street. And that is the whole hub of the Convoy District, our Pan-Asian business district. So tons of restaurants, a lot of cultural activity in this area. And to go along with that community plan update, it's going to um, be receiving a lot more development. So right now it's a lot of industrial land, strip malls, big box stores. Uh, here's Convoy Street and it's new bike lanes that'll be um, ready to go springtime when you all arrive, if you ride up to Kearney Mesa. And then uh, sort of like is alluded to on the cover, you know, new development, helping uh, fill in that housing need that we all have in the state, uh, but providing that in a community that has a lot of destinations already that people will be able to walk and bike to. And so this is where that bike lane is going to be really critical. So that way people can make those short trips within their community without having to drive. Uh, and so you can see that building under construction there. And then just to wrap up again, some folks have already alluded to looking ahead in San Diego, we're updating our street design manual. We also are updating our bicycle master plan. And so we're working with Sandeg to uh, craft the regional and our local bike master plan. And so we'll encourage everyone to participate in those updates and uh, opportunities that they go along. And that concludes my thing. And I can take any questions at the end, but thanks again for coming to San Diego and we'll see you then. Great. Thanks so much, Everett. And I will go back to showing my slides for Randy, who will be um, presenting next. Screen share. There we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you all. My name is Randy Torres Van Vleck, and I'm a community planner working in San Diego. And I'm really excited for the return of the California Bike Summit. It's one of my favorite summits. I've uh, been to mostly all of them except for um, uh, the most recent one in Oakland. And in 2015, I was uh, on the steering committee for the summit and a group that uh, I co-founded and organized with called Los Cruzadores. We organized an event as part of the California Bike Summit uh, in affiliation with it to, to basically promote the summit. It's called BC Californias. And so our group, Los Cruzadores, we organize transborder bike rides from San Diego to Tijuana to really celebrate and highlight the unique beauty of our San Diego Tijuana mega region. Uh, as Kendra mentioned, the theme, you know, this coming year is crossroads and uh, our community is, is a border community. Folks cross the border every day. Um, to you know, to live and work and, and play. And so that's a big part of our identity as, as a region. And I grew up in that the border community, I grew up in Southwest Chula Vista, um, closer to downtown Tijuana than to downtown, no, to, to closer to downtown Tijuana than to downtown San Diego. And so Los Cruzadores, we organized transborder rides. And um, in 2015, we, we, we led this event that was the, the idea was to connect the Californians together. And so we worked with advocates from Tijuana, from Baja, from Mexico, um, and the city of Tijuana to organize an event that that did that, that that rode from one California to the other. And it was called BC Californias, and it was a fantastic event. We might uh, we're in talks with Calbike about potentially doing another Los Cruzadores ride next year as part of the summit. Uh, stay tuned on that. Um, you can see the photo on the right there. Those are my tocayos, um, Hugo, uh, Randy Salgado, and uh, Randy Armenta. We all actually name Randy in Mexican Spanish. Uh, someone with your same name is your tocayo. So uh, Randy uh, Armenta and I decided that, you know, we're really inspired by the work that we've been doing together. 
um, with the flyer design and the organizing um, that we decided to start um, our own LLC doing um, community planning, community engagement. So it's called Tokayo Engagement. Uh, and so that's kind of my new, my new venture. Um, next slide, please. Uh, before that, I worked for the City Heights Community Development Corporation for 13 years, an amazing organization founded in 1981 that, that has done uh, a lot of great um, community organizing, policy work, affordable housing production, uh, transportation justice organizing, um, and infrastructure advocacy. In fact, they led the way for the first freeway covered park in the entire state of California, on the SR15, but uh, there was a lot of stress and organizing and work that took place to get that. And unfortunately it took, you know, allowing the, another freeway to be built through City Heights uh, to allow that. And that was the 15 freeway, which is pictured, depicted there on the left in 1981. That was kind of the sentiment when residents were working in that planning process. They felt that the freeway, another freeway in a black and brown community, another freeway in a low income community that would divide, um, City Heights, uh, just as it had done, sadly, in, in Southeast San Diego and in, in Barrio Logan and other communities um, throughout the country. And so City Heights CDC refused to allow that to happen again. And so they worked on their own community plan to underground the freeway and get freeway cover park um, on top and transit down the middle, um, housing and transit oriented development. Before that term even existed, they were advo advocating for, for these amenities. Um, and there was a lot of, you know, stress and work that took place over the years. The eight blocks of cover was watered down to, to five blocks and then to three and then to one. Um, but still a lot of successes that were created from that. Um, 2008, Sandag and, and Caltrans uh, decided to change their mind after the freeway opened. Seven years of allowing the freeway to open with, with no transit amenity built at all um, in terms of the centerline stations, that is. Um, they decided that they wanted to build, use the, the space dedicated to inline transit to use that space for another carpool lane. So more cars being pumped through City Heights um, at the detriment of the impacted community. Um, and so City Heights, CDC and leaders refused to allow that to happen. Um, and so in 2008, they organized to save the centerline station. So um, you know, the org state was, was effective in doing that. And that momentum that we created through the organizing um, carried on to other movements. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, please, Kendra. That'd be great. Um, you know, that movement work carries on and City Heights, in my opinion today, is the, really the center of the transportation justice movement in the region. Um, I'm proud to be a resident of City Heights myself. Um, and we carry that momentum forward to other campaigns um, like the Orange Avenue Bikeway, which we, we kind of rebranded to call the Orange Avenue Family Bikeway because it connected about eight different schools in City Heights, from high schools to elementary schools, daycares. It's really the street that's going to connect families and parks and schools. And to get the support for it, we, we, we really wanted to center families in that. And uh, it's, you know, the, the, we've been part of the regional bikeway um, planning since 2000 since 2009 and uh, 2012, and that funding with that 200 million was committed that Josh mentioned, we were there advocating for it. We've been at the table ever since. Um, the projects uh, are great. Um, there, most of the projects had traffic diverters as part of the network. Fortunately, most of those were removed, but the one that's remained is in Orange Avenue. And that's because of the strong organizing, the community support we're able to build. So. Of uh, the first uh, regional tra um, traffic diverter network uh, along the active transportation corridor will be in City Heights along the Orange Avenue Family Bikeway, and that's going to construction, I believe, next year. So really excited on that. And, um, and you know, we have really kind of a, you know, we, we recognize that we're trying to create a network, right? And so it's not just this project or that project, but we need to create a network for for all of our communities, um, starting with our environmental justice communities who've been left behind. Um, and so we've got a lot of good projects coming forward, but we also recognize that, yeah, our residents want to be able to go to North Park as well. And they want to be able to go to Kensington and downtown and to UCSD and SDSU. So looking at those connectivity enhancements are important. So the 30th Street Bikeway was, was an opportunity to connect a lot of those Sandag infrastructure projects that were mentioned. And when that opened in 2021, that was huge. And we were happy to support that, even though it wasn't in City Heights, but we, we saw the, the connection to 
um, improving the west-east uh, corridors. Final slide. Uh, as I mentioned, Tokayo Engagement, um, we are an LLC and we're partnering now with Urban Collaborative Project. And um, that's my main focus now is, is working with them to help kind of design a housing program for them and build upon their transportation program. Uh, just last night, we, we walked uh, 47th Street and Imperial Avenue in Southeast San Diego. Fortunately, Southeast um, has been on the back burner of uh, regional prioritization. Um, in terms of investments, uh, home to three Vision Zero corridors, Euclid, Market, and Imperial, um, minimum width sidewalks throughout most of the community, not a lot of tree canopies um, and, and regional investments. So we're trying to change that together. We're working on a letter that's going to be coming out soon. Um, and the, the photo there on the right is from the all the way to the Bay bike ride that City 8 CDC led with the Bike Coalition and uh, stopped last year at Southeast San Diego's Transportation Expo. So that's the, the work goes on. Um, I know that we're gonna be highlighting a lot of successes, but we still have a lot of needs as well. And so in the summit, we hope to dig uh, more deeply into those and work with you to brainstorm, troubleshoot how we can get these projects done more quickly. So appreciate you all. Great, thanks Randy. And um, thank you to all of our panelists for sharing your work with us. I really appreciated hearing what, what each of your organizations and agencies are doing in collaboration. Um, 30th Street is a great example and just all of the other work you're doing. So thank you so much for sharing today. Um, and if anyone wants more information on any of uh, the organizations that joined us today, um, any of their work, Websites are on the screen. Um, um, so we have a few minutes left for questions. There have been a few coming in that I will share with panel. Um, I'll, I'll share in a moment. Um, but yeah, definitely appreciate that many of you put in questions during the talk and, and some of these questions have already been answered. So um, very excited to see the conversation there. And I will also, while those are coming in, um, share the information on registering for our summit. So to register for the summit, um, you can go to CalBike's website, calbike.org. Uh, the direct link is there and um, in the chat as well. Um, we have early bird registration going on right now until December 15th. Um, and for folks attending today, we have a special code on the screen, San Diego success, all one word, lowercase, um, to have an additional discount back to our 2022 summit early bird pricing. Um, given that we unfortunately, um, I unfortunately, Mia Culpa, uh, established this webinar today with a cap um, using the wrong part of, of Zoom and a few folks were not able to get in, we will extend that code um, to allow the folks to access the recording um, through Friday and, and use that code and it will expire at the end of the day, uh, midnight on Friday. Um, we're also open for proposals right now. Um, link should be up on our website for that request for proposals and it'll be in the chat as well um, to propose sessions for the summit. Um, so on, on to questions. Um, the first one that came in from Carter was for Josh. Uh, can we ask why 2014 was so high in ridership? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I think the I think ridership coming off of the recession was high for a sustained period, and I and I think uh, started to dip around 2016 17. So I, I I do think there was a strong surge. Uh, we started counting in in fall of 2012 primarily with these eco counters at the at the regional bike network locations, and uh, and I, and I think that I I think we have to recall uh, yeah you know 10, 10 12 years ago. That, uh, that there were a ton of people in a, in a very different economy that were uh, depending on on bike travel, I think, to to save money. And um, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't extrapolate too much, but um, I think that was a I think that's a, a big factor. Great. Thanks, Josh. And another question. Um... Anar, you sent this in, I think it was during Jeremy's talk, so I'm not sure if it was to Jeremy or someone else, but any updates on the dangerous intersection improvements that were supposed to be funded in the fiscal year 24 budget? I know, Sergey, we're updating our Hope Provisions Zero report next year as a, a recap of the 
to Fatal 15, and we'll be releasing that data uh, next year. Great. And actually, I could probably speak to that one too. I'm trying to find if we've put it out there on our public budget website. It was 1.5 million for uh, intersections. They all got allocated, but I'll, I'll find that uh, information out and share that with the group. But it was a mix of uh, signals, roundabouts, and a couple hawks that needed some additional funding. Great. Um, another question just came in from Felipe. Have your coalition worked with the San Diego Community College system to help aid students who might not have the easiest access in getting to school, or perhaps promoting um, bicycling as a form of transportation? I'm assuming that's to any of our nonprofit um, folks here yeah. today on the panel. Yeah, I was actually going to respond in thread, but um, back in, I don't even remember when, I want to say Q1 of this year, there was a student that got hit by a car somewhere near San Diego City College, and the like entire campus community rallied to put out like an op-ed and, and publish some um, like article on like how unsafe it is to be a pedestrian or bicyclist um, coming to S City College. And then they had a whole piece written and then I think somebody in charge stepped down and then they completely pivoted their um, like their media work. So, uh, you know, up until that point, we were working with City College specifically around Park Boulevard advocacy work. Um, but once that shift took place, the original point of contact we had became unresponsive. And since then, we haven't really been in touch with them but if anyone here has a contact at san diego city college that would be open to working together on more advocacy work around their campus or elsewhere would love to reach out to them yeah i actually know that student his i think that you're referring to his name is alex and he has given public comment at the mobility board and other places and i'm in contact with him so happy to work with you on that anar he's a very outspoken advocate i think he's actually been hit more than once um, and he uses his bike to get around everywhere. So, yeah, I think that's some low hanging fruit that we could um, definitely work together on. Great. And I know, um, let's see, I haven't seen any additional questions. So I'll go back to one that was answered um, to share with folks who might not be reading the, the chat there. Um, someone asked about funding for the projects that Sandag, um, Sandag was mentioning, that Josh was mentioning. and um, how that funding is distributed. And so um, well, scrolling again back to where that was answered. Here we go. So I know that um, lost the inline is confusing me here. It's okay. Sorry, folks. <laughs> um, I I have to acknowledge that Stefan on this call as well had a really good response down below, and the inline I think should 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 address that specifically that this was a tra this is a uh, a sales tax amendment uh, that was passed by voters in two thousand four, and that is the that is the like the core funding source, and then the pie chart should be helpful to see that that cities are getting a lot of that funding as well from the same sales tax measure, but we have a specific portion called out specifically for this program, the bicycle pedestrian and neighborhood safety program. And so that is a as a guaranteed uh, percentage of money from the sales tax that we are getting annually and can use it for that that uh, matching source. And that's a, a great um, a great point that funding is is critical to all of our work throughout the state um, in every community and statewide. And um, judging from the few responses we've already received to the request for session proposals. I know that uh, funding is a topic folks would like to see talked about. Um, so definitely encourage encourage uh, conversations about that for the summit. Um, let's see a new. Um, are there any other questions from folks? I, if I missed any, please uh, chime in or, or raise your hand. We don't have too many people trying to speak over each other. So. Um, well, not seeing any, again, really appreciate everyone's uh, participation today. We are very excited to get everyone together in April in San Diego and learn more both from the great folks on this call as well as folks throughout the state. 
Um, look forward, um, look, look out for communication from Cowbike on a few additional of these summit advanced sessions coming um, at the start of the year. And um, please, you know, feel free to connect and uh, propose sessions. And we look forward to seeing you all in San Diego in April. Thank you so much.